The weather has kept me away from doing projects on the boat for about a week or so, but it's warmed up some. And the rain has returned, monsoons, as you can see, the ground is wet, but today is a good day. So I'm going to continue working on the bowsprit platform project, which is right there. The fiber last thing I did the other day worked out well, so I'm going to clean it up with a um, grinder of some sort, and then I'm going to test fit bowsprit platforms. Should be exciting. Good progress has been made. You notice the bowsprit platform is looking like it's in place. It's not actually fastened down. I have a couple of things to do yet, which I'm about to show you. And a bit of a gotcha, which I'm going to show you. The, the starboard side platform, for some reason, is sitting on the anchor roller. When I put the anchor rollers on, I lined them up with the, the ledge that the bowsprit platform sits on and if anything it's a little bit low but when I put the bowsprit down in place it's actually touching right here and that means that it lifts up the bowsprit platform here when I put the brackets in place I made them exactly level with the ledge that the platform sits on so this raises up the platform some and leaves a gap between the platform and the bracket. It's to about it's about it's an eighth of an inch on the outside and it gets smaller as it gets into the side. Now when I fasten this in, fasteners get screws all the way down the inside. And there's two uh, plates, wood, and I've added steel across here and across here. Now the steel plates will make the platform level. Putting the screws in will make it follow the, the ledge. So I think what I'm going to do is when I mount the thing with screws, I'm going to have to put a little bit of thickened epoxy on top of the bracket and let it fill the gap while it's wet. It'll make a, a perfect fit. But other than that, I'm really happy. Have a look. Here you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Bowsprit platform rests on the anchor roller. Just on that end piece. And then it pushes the bowsprit platform away from the bracket. So when I screw this down, it'll suck that down tight to the ledge, but it won't suck it down tight here. 
and the steel plate goes right here and the other one goes right here which will make them level so it won't be flexing down too much and I don't want to stress the screws that I'll put in so I'll put some epoxy in there build it up and we're good to go so next part of this project will be to put some uh, penetrating epoxy as a sealer on the uh, the brackets where I've scuffed up the wood around it I'm going to seal that and then I will need to drill holes for the forward plate drill holes for the aft plate and I need to get some mounting hardware the bolts for these plates are in rough condition some of them are stripped so I need to get the stainless bolts in here, two inches or something and that'll take me another day okay because the weather is far from being wonderful what well, has not been horribly bad but no snow weekend has come and with it we've got some beautiful weather it's a little windy out today but it's sunny a little cool but it uh, doesn't matter because when you're working you work up a, a sweat anyway don't you so as you can see behind me we've got uh, springtime happening at the yacht club and the sounds of nature are happening sanders grinders guys bsing that kind of thing so over here is Elusive. It's a beautiful old wooden boat. It was made in the 1930s. It was uh, reset a few years ago. It's been, I think, a couple of years since she's been hauled, but she's uh, getting a new motor and the bottom job done, and she'll go back in. On the other side, we've got Why Not right in front of us and White Swan behind that. And both are the uh, Lower Mainland Yacht Club boats coming out for their annual maintenance fixing up various things and I'm not sure why the club members aren't down here working but they don't appear to be at the moment so as usual as just moi, I'm here working on the bowsprit platform but today I'm going to take the platform back off mark it for I'm going to mark it for second epoxy for the bracket and I'm going to put some straight epoxy on the places that I ground off and if things work well I'm going to assemble it. I'm going to put it all together. So, it's open.
This part of the project has taken me an awful lot longer than I expected it to. It's been about four weeks. The video clips that I've got have been taken over a number of different days. I know they come kind of blurred to one, but uh, it has actually taken me about four weeks to get the bowsprit platform in place. So as of right now, the job is basically complete. I've had a couple of challenges that I'm going to talk to you about, but you have to come and have a look. So as you can see in the video clips, the first thing I did was to actually mount these peak boards into the little ledge that I created for them. I drilled out the holes for the screws. I overdrilled them, filled them with epoxy, drilled them again, just because I don't want water getting into my Douglas fir and rotting it. And then just to make sure, I put butyl tape underneath each hole where the screw will go through. Now, I'm not sure why I did it, but I doubled it up. I put two pieces of butyl tape under each hole. One piece would have done. And the net effect was to push the teak up so that I've got a little bit of a lip here. Now, I'm hoping that when it gets warm out and the butyl tape softens, so that I can tighten the screws down and and suck the teak down a little bit lower. Otherwise, I'm going to have to sand them to make them flat. Otherwise, it's going to catch on people's feet, or my feet, and uh, it might split. The wood is fairly old. I've, I've coated it in epoxy now, but it is old, and it has um, cracked before, so I don't want to risk doing that. The other thing that I had trouble with was the pulpit. The pulpit is one piece and the forestay actually has to go through those two bars at the front so I had to slack off all the rigging and take the forestay off the bowsprit. It wasn't a big deal to get it off but when I put the pulpit back on it wasn't a big deal but when I put the pulpit on and I got it bolted down then I had to reinstall the force stay and that was a problem because I had to do it while I'm standing on the bowsprit so I'm way about 180 190 pounds in there and with that kind of leverage standing right out the very end there of course the bowsprit is going to bend down which means that I've got less room to maneuver there is no turnbuckle on the force stay so what I did was I put a vehicle down in front of the boat and I used a small come along to apply pressure on the on the force stay and pull it down far enough so I could get the toggle over the fitting and put the clevis pin through. So that actually took a couple of hours to do. It was it was kind of finicky and I was worried that I was gonna bend something or break something, but I didn't. Which is a very good thing. Those guys are expensive. And the last challenge that I had was to line up the bolts for the blocks that fit underneath the platform. So the last challenge was these support blocks. They fit under the bowsprit platform like so. And uh, there's a bolt. It goes through the platform itself, right through the block, through the hull, and it gets bolted on from inside the anchor locker. Now the issue with this was lining these holes up, these guys here. I was quite amazed, because my woodworking skills aren't the greatest, but this hole here is original. This hole here, right here, is the original hole. And I had a little bit of fiberglass in it when I was working on it, so I cleaned that out. I dropped the bolt through the block underneath, and it went right in, like I had planned it that way. This one, on the other hand, was a little bit different, because if you have been following my videos, I actually had to scab in this piece here. This is inlaid wood, because it had split, and uh, there's a big chunk taken out. So rather than fill it with fiberglass, like I did here, here, I put in new wood, 
and covered up the hole. So my concern was how do I drill a hole, get it aligned properly? Here. And not only that, how do I drill that the whole deck joint? I put um, a special kind of epoxy on the joint and basically filled in the hole. So now I've got to drill. Of course, a drill is about that long, and then the bit makes it about that long, and there's no room in here to get a drill in. Fortunately for me, one of the guys here in the uh, club has a drill with a right angle head. So I used a short bit, right angle head drill, cleaned that hole out. Then I put, it was very technical, I put a pencil in the hole and made a mark underneath. And then from that hole I marked the side right there. And from there I measured the same distance in that the other side is and the same distance along. Uh, squared it up, held my breath, drilled a hole, dropped the bolt through, lined up perfectly. So right now I am going to uh, sand the blocks down. So this is my belt sander rig, just a hand belt sander that I inverted, put in the vise, and put some <laughs> penetrating epoxy on them, these are teak, and then when I come back I will put some sealer on either end, maybe butyl tape, maybe 4200, I haven't decided, put the bolts in, bolt them on, and that'll be it for my bowsprit platform which brings me one step closer to getting back in the water. Today's a really nice day. It's good and warm. You can see I'm in my t-shirt again. And uh, it's a, a work day, so I wasn't able to come down here. But another day like this, I'll be able to finish off the copper coat spots on the bottom and my transducer, which needs to be painted. And then all that remains to be done is the wind vane. So we are literally just days away, provided that the uh, weather cooperates. So here's hope it does. In the meantime, I hope you're having fun. And I will wish you fair winds, falling seas. God bless.